Um, today I'm going to focus my remarks on um, the National Ambient Air Quality Standards and a Allegheny County. So um, the Clean Air Act authorizes the EPA to um, establish national ambient air quality standards. Um, and they're classified into two standards, primary and secondary standards. So the primary standards um, are designed to protect public health within an ad adequate margin of safety. And they're supposed to um, protect certain uh, sensitive populations, uh, specifically children, the elderly, um, individuals suffering from respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, those who work or exercise, exercise outdoors, and those living in poverty. And then the secondary standards are supposed to protect us, protect public welfare from any known or anticipated um, adverse effects of, of pollution, such as damage to buildings, to crops, um, and to forests. So a region that meets a given standard is considered an attainment area, and those that don't are considered a non-attainment area. And there are six um, principal criteria air pollutants that um, the EPA has set for the NACs. And those are ground level ozone, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrogen oxides, sulfur dioxide, and lead. So the Clean Air Act um, requires the EPA to review these standards every five years, um, just so that they will be up to date with the most current um, health sciences and so that they will protect the population within an adequate margin of health and safety. Um, and in terms of the NACs, Allegheny County is one of only 20 counties in the United States that is um, in non-attainment for fine particles. And according to some uh, uh, information that I found from the Allegheny County Department of Health, um, Allegheny as a county as a whole is considered um, in non-attainment for the 2012 uh, particulate matter standard, and it's on the edge of coming out of non-attainment for the 2008 ozone standard. However, in October of 2015, the ozone standard was strengthened, um, and those designations have not been uh, made yet. So. Um, they probably will not meet the 2015 standards. So um, some of the speakers have been talking about the state of the air report. And I don't know if everyone is familiar with this, but um, the Lung Association does an annual national uh, air quality report card. And they measure three pollutants, ozone, 24-hour um, particulate matter, and annual particulate matter. And this year, we actually used the 2015 ozone standard. So we re-downloaded uh, re all the data back to 1996 and compared it to the 2015 ozone standard. And the results of the state of the air for 2016 um, showed that Allegheny County was the most polluted county in the Pittsburgh metro area. However, it has improved um, its level of year-round particle pollution. So there was a 0.4 um, decrease in the, um, the level of, of year-round particle pollution. Um, so that's something that, you know, that, that's a good thing and something that we should be um, excited about. But the state of the air report found that while Allegheny County is improving, it still suffers from significant air pollution. Um, Allegheny County, like I said, is the most polluted county in the Pittsburgh, Newcastle, Weirton metro area, but it did improve. Um, and it also, um, in regard to ozone, Allegheny County also re remains the most polluted county in the metro area. Um, and it had its best ever weighted average of 15.5 days with unhealthy levels of ozone. And this, um, again, is an improvement. But the state of the air findings do correlate with the basic sentiment that Allegheny County is improving. However, it's not improving fast enough. So most counties in the US had reached attainment decades ago, and um, Allegheny County is still working for that. So actually, sorry, I have some more um, little graphics that you can take a look at to um, see some of the different uh, sources of pollution within Allegheny County. Um, 
And like I said, the pace of um, air quality improvements in Allegheny County has been slower um, than the, the improvements seen nationwide. And um, what I've found is that the existing pollution monitoring network is not, may not be adequate to reflect the full range of pollution impacts in the region due to um, the complex local terrain um, combined with local industrial transportation sources. And um, reductions from power plants in Western PA will be required to help attain standards not only in the state, but also downwind in other states adversely affected by their emissions. Now, if you can look at this um, chart that I have, it shows, you can see that Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh metro area improved, like I said, slightly um, in regards to um, its particulate matter grade. But if you look, Cincinnati also improved, and its improvement was much greater than Pittsburgh. And if you also look at other areas like Harrisburg, they improved to they improved not a lot but still more than pittsburgh so it was enough to um to for them to move up but for the pittsburgh metro area to stay where it was or to actually move to to move move up slightly but not as much as the other metro areas so there are many different health factors for um, poor air quality and according to the National Air Toxics um, Assessment, Allegheny County ranked 21st out of more than 3,200 counties nationwide for cancer, cancer risk from air pollution. And they found that the, the biggest risks were attributable to um, things like uh, predominantly Coke oven admission, emissions. Sorry, I think I had. Um, I also found another study from the University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public Health, and they talked about some other cancer drivers within the region, um, and they found um, formaldehyde, benzene, coke oven admissions, as I had said, and carbon um, tetrachloride. So these are all different um, issues which can, in fact, which can um, negatively impact people's health. Well, in, aside from the um, poor impacts of, um, you know, of the impacts of health on people to produce cancer, they can also do different things um, in terms of breathing ozone. So there are certain risks for the um, the uh, the vulnerable population populations that I had talked about: the children, the elderly, um, people who work or exercise outdoors, and um, people who live in poverty. And some of the risks from breathing in ozone are uh, premature death, um, pulmonary and cardiovascular inflammation, um, asthma attacks, hospital and ER admissions, and worsening of COPD. Um, and Allegheny County um, has failed to meet the national um, ambient air quality standards, but um, even areas that don't successfully meet the standard can also have unhealthy air, especially to vulnerable populations. And the American Lung Association has argued for um, more protective standards for many years. We had actually been, um, uh, the new ozone standard that was just um, announced in October was 70 parts per billion. And the Lung Association um, had been um, asking and advocating for 60 parts per billion. So uh, you can see that 60 and 70, um, we still have a long way to go, but we do want to, um, to make sure that, that people are protected and that parents have, um, you know, can make an informed decision about whether or not their children can go outside and play. Uh, last summer, when they were um, about to announce the ozone standards, we went to um, an asthma camp that the uh, Lung Association runs. They run them across the country. And this was a camp that children uh, went to because it was uh, completely medically staffed. So the fact that if they had an asthma attack, there would be medical professionals there in case that they had an attack to provide them with help. And these children could not go outside and they could not go to a normal camp because of the fact that, um, you know, if they were outside on a bad ozone day, it might possibly trigger an asthma attack and there not, may not be a medical person there to um, help them 
you know, to give them treatment. So, you know, we have been really advocating for stronger and more protective standards so that parents can have, um, you know, so they can make a more informed decision about whether or not they, their children should go outside. Um, actually, I ended up going faster <laughs> than I thought. Um, <laughs> So, but um, I run the Healthy Air campaign for the Lung Association, and what we do um, is we work with health partners and health organizations um, and people who suffer from respiratory illnesses to, um, to try to help make sure that the Clean Air Act is enforced and implemented. And um, we have things, we have a, fa a Facebook page and we have a Twitter account. And you know we try to get the word out that the Clean Air Act needs to be enforced. Um, you know we we regularly monitor legislation to make sure that um, there's no bills coming up that would try to weaken the Clean Air Act. Um, and we are always looking for people to join us. And you know this sec the, this part of the lecture was entitled "The Call to Action." And you know this is one way that you can all get involved is by becoming a part of something like the Healthy Air Campaign, where we try to make um, decision makers and the public aware of the need for clean air um, because of the health impact, impacts of breathing uh, poor air quality. Um, so if you like to join us, you can contact me. My information is up there. And you can also tweet. Um, I'd also like to make a plug for the Lung Association. Uh, the Lung Force Expo is June 8th um, at the Marriott in Cranberry Township. So if anybody's interested, you can uh, join us for that. Thank you.